So if I asked you what dimension is this video, well, you definitely say two-dimensional, because videos are made of pixels, which have an x-coordinate, a y-coordinate, and in this sense, videos are spatially two-dimensional. Which is true, but you are forgetting that video is just an illusion. Remember, motion in video doesn't exist. What you're looking at is a sequence of images that play one by one at the speed of your frame rate, where a high frame rate means a better illusion of motion and a low frame rate not so much. In other words, a video is a collection of images. So any pixel in a video is not only defined by two spatial dimensions, but also by one temporal one, meaning that any pixel in a video is not only described by where it is, but also by when it is. But we can take this even a step further, so imagine our video happens to be an MRI scan. Is this two-dimensional? Well, yes, but also no, because this was generated by taking cross-sections of a three-dimensional object. So instead of having three spatial dimensions, we've decided to substitute one of those for time, which means we can take this process and reverse it. So we start off with our video, which is a sequence of 2D cross-sections of a 3D object, and then convert this into a volumetric texture. This means that what you're looking at right now is the video just spatially, I guess. And to recover our original video, we just substitute depth for time by taking a sequence of cross-sections. But wait a minute, there's a lot of different ways we could be taking these cross-sections, and this is where it starts getting really, really trippy. So the effect of taking these cross-sections and converting it into time is normally called time displacement. And when you look at the results, it should be fairly obvious why it's called that, but normally you do this kind of thing in After Effects, but it's fairly difficult to do in Blender. However, I have created a node setup that you can download for free on Gumroad, or you can donate by paying a non-zero amount, and this node network can time displace any image sequence. So to use this, just open up Blender, head over to the video editing startup scene, and import in your footage, which you can trim however you want. We're now going to export this as an image sequence with the naming convention of some index and then an underscore. And make sure to remember this index because we're gonna need it later. Now in the blend file that you downloaded, just paste in the path you exported your sequence to, put in the file type of your images, and make sure that the sequence number matches your index from before. Finally, to see the time displacement, we're gonna need to bring up the strength of this effect, which will displace time according to the gradient that we've chosen, where black means don't displace at all and white means maximum displacement. But why a gradient? I thought we were talking about cross sections. Well, really, you can think of these gradients as our cutting plane. It's just much faster to calculate things this way, and it means we can easily create some more complicated results. 